he broke Shiva's bow. And that has an esoteric meaning involving the movement of Shakti in the brain. Welcome to Living with Reality, a podcast featuring archive teachings and modern conversations with Dr. Robert Svoboda, brought to you by the Be Here Now Network. Living with Reality explores Ayurveda and other wisdom traditions of India, which Dr. Svoboda has been studying for nearly 50 years. For more information, please visit BeHereNowNetwork.com slash Dr. Svoboda. That's D-R-S-V-O-B-O-D-A. Hello and welcome to Living with Reality. I'm Paula Crossfield, your host and a Vedic astrologer and business coach who's helped Dr. Sabota build his online business. Today on the episode, we have a really exciting topic for you. It's one that's much in demand. People have asked for this for a long time. So I really hope that you are enjoying it. It is the esoteric Ramayana. Dr. Svoboda gives some insight into the story of the Ramayana and how the more subtle levels of the story can be interpreted. So we really hope you enjoy this episode. If you'd like to learn more from Dr. Svoboda, you can go to his courses at drsvoboda.teachable.com. That's D-R-S-V-O-B-O-D-A dot teachable.com. There are topics in there like prana, pranayama, and hanuman. There's a telling of the Ramayana that's more in-depth than what we could do here. So go ahead and check out those courses, and, and we hope you enjoy this episode. The story of the Ramayana is the story of the spiritual progress of an individual soul. In fact, it's basically the story of Kundalini Yoga. Each one of us has within us all the main characters of that drama. And as we do sadhana, we live through the same sorts of trials and tribulations that Rama and Sita had to endure. Rama and Sita and everyone else had their own personalities. They had their own Kundalinis. But they are also actors in this epic that is performed by everyone who does kundalini yoga. So Rama is called the Raja, the king, because he is the indwelling spirit. He is the soul, and he is the king of all the beings that are in the body. In this context, there are 72,000 beings in the body. Those are the 72,000 nadis, the 72,000 channels in which the prana moves. And because the prana brings to life everything that it touches, each one of those nadis, as long as the universe of the body exists, each one of those nadis behaves like an individual personality. And this is why sometimes Lord Krishna is spoken of as having 72,000 lovers, because he is connected to all 72,000 of the nadis in his organism. Krishna relates to Shakti as a lover. Rama relates to Shakti as a king. Both are Vishnu. Both are the supreme reality. Rama's brother Lakshmana represents the power of concentration, because without that concentration, the soul is never going to be able to reconnect to its bride. Its bride is the Kundalini Shakti. The word Lakshmana comes from the word Laksha, and Laksha suggests the, uh, the, the thing that one concentrates on. So Lakshmana suggests one-pointed concentration, and Lakshman always focused his attention on Rama. So that is an essential requirement for performing successful sadhana, that you take all of your attention and focus it mainly on your goal, on achieving the supreme. Yes, occasionally you're going to have to pay attention to what's going on in the next room, but most of the time it should be focused on the supreme reality. 
Sita, of course, is herself the Kundalini Shakti. She was not born from a womb. She was created when her father, King Janaka, was plowing the ground in order to create a sacrificial altar with the intention of having a child. And she was found in one of those furrows. In fact, the furrow, the, that's why she's called Sita, because that word Sita means a furrow in Sanskrit. So she has therefore come from Bhu Garbha, from the womb of the earth. The word Janaka, her father was Janaka, the word Janaka means the creator. So it is Janaka, the creator, who removes Sita from the earth element and therefore awakens her, creates her or awakens her. So it's, it's awakening the Muladhara Chakra so that the Shakti will become available to do what the Shakti needs to do, which is move around and, and achieve those goals that, um, that we set for the Shakti, namely eventual enlightenment. Uh, Janaka is the king of Videha, and Videha means no body. And Janaka is, is a, was a unique king. He had purified the fire element completely within, within him. He used to sit on his throne with one leg in the fire, not near the fire, but in the fire. And he was communicating with the fire all the time. And he would have one of his queens on his left thigh with his hand on her left breast, so that he was always connected to not only his Shakti as embodied in her, but the Shakti of the entire kingdom also as embodied in her. So Janaka was, he had a body, he had a Deha, but he behaved as if he had no body. So he was an extremely advanced being. And it's only thanks to that, that he was able to have Sita as his daughter. Rama meets Sita when he comes to Janaka's court to attend the Swayamvara ceremony. The Swayamvara is where um, Sita had the opportunity to choose her own husband. This, this used to happen sometimes in the past here in India. And so at the Swayamvara, Swayamvara literally means personal choice, um, Lord uh, uh, Rama came to these to that to Janaka's court, and Sita chose him, and he was able to choose her because he broke Shiva's bow, and that has an esoteric meaning involving the movement of Shakti in the brain. Almost immediately after Rama and Sita, uh, Sita are married, they have to go to the forest, and. Lakshmana insists on going along with them. Actually, Sita did not, uh, Rama did not want either Sita or Lakshman to accompany him, but they both insisted that they had to go because the, there's the soul. The Kundalini Shakti is the, when it's in the body, identifying with the body, it's the ahankara, the ego, the I creating force. When it focuses on the soul, it forgets about the body, then it becomes Kundalini. So Sita is embodying the power of the entire cosmos and she is now focused completely on Rama. She still has to, she and Rama and Lakshman have to circle around, uh, move around in the body, in the, the cosmos that is the body, but they are always along with him. And once they leave from Ayodhya, King Dasharatha, the father of Rama, dies not long afterwards. Dasharatha means 10 chariots, and in this case, those represent the 10 senses. And dying means the 10 senses have to also focus on where Rama has gone. They have to die to the body in order to be able to move all in, in the direction that Rama and Sita and Lakshman are moving. And everything went along fine until Sita became curious and, and, and attempted to do something good, but it was something that ended up not being so good. And she did not pay attention to Lakshman. Lakshman, the one-pointed concentration, 
wanted her to continuously focus only on Rama and not anything else. But this is the reason why, just because your Kundalini gets partially awakened, Kundalini, if it awakens completely, immediately, you won't be able to continue to exist. So it awakens partially, but the very fact that it's only partially awakened means that there's a great chance that it's going to be diverted from its focus and move in some direction that is where it can be trapped. And it becomes trapped by Ravana, the demon king. And Ravana also has 10 heads, the 10 sense organs. But now those 10 sense organs, which had been uh, focused on Rama all this time, now suddenly the ego, the, re the remains of the ego, because you're not perfectly um, enlightened yet, you, you have just started the process, the remains of the ego now arise. Your blind spot now comes to the fore, and now, now Ravana, the ego, grabs hold of the Kundalini Shakti and takes it da back down to Lanka. Lanka means Lam Bija, the earth element. So it is the ego wants to wants to have the 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 Shakti remain in the body so that the ego can enjoy it. So that very ego that Kundalini is trying to transform into that pure shakti that will focus on the soul is now being corrupted by that remnant of the ego that wants to maintain a limited individuality. Now, now of course, once, once Ravana has taken Sita away, then uh, Rama has to search for her. So even after you have got stuck in some part of the world that is your organism or the world that is the cosmos outside you, even after you've gotten stuck, Rama is still going to try to locate you. The soul is still going to try to find you somewhere. And, um, but it has to search because now it doesn't know. Now it found you once, but now it doesn't know where to look for you. So Rama and Lakshman have to look around and, and they, they look long and hard until they meet Anjaneya, Hanuman. And Anjaneya is the son of the god of wind. And Anjaneya is therefore well known as the embodiment of prana. He is prana himself. And so what you have to do, once the kundalini has started to become awakened, but you are not yet completely on the right track, you have to do prana cultivation. And that prana cultivation is important so that you can make both the one-pointed uh, awareness that is Lakshmana and the soul that is Rama come into the proper alignment with Sita so she can be retrieved. So what Anjaneya has to do is that he has to go down into Lanka. So Anjaneya, the prana, has to go down into the Muladhara and it has to search for Sita. And Sita, the Kundalini Shakti, is a uh, prana is a Shakti, the Sita is a Shakti, but Sita, the Kundalini, is much more refined than prana is, and that's why Anjaneya has to look around. But the prana can become more refined, and as it become more, becomes more refined, then it's able to locate Sita and let her know that Rama is on the way. And so Anjaneya flies down to Lanka, locates Sita, and then at that point, Ravana captures Hanuman and tells Hanuman that he is now going to, going to insult him and shame him and so on. And Anjaneya is not at all concerned because he is focusing only on Rama. And Sita is doing prayers and mantras to protect Hanuman so that he will not be damaged. And Ravana sets Anjaneya's tail on fire because uh, he believes that monkeys are always proud of their tails and this will be a great way to, sh to, to insult Anjaneya. But Anjane he has not realized what kind of monkey Anjaneya is. And so Anjaneya simply breaks all of the bonds and now that his tail is on fire, he goes out of his way to wander around and burn Lanka to the ground. 
So all of Ravana's beautiful fantasy world is now destroyed. And so this is the fantasy world that the ego has created. And once the prana connects to the kundalini shakti, still the process has a long way to go. But this is the first indication that yes, there is a connection now between the prana and the kundalini shakti. The prana can go back to Rama and Lakshman and report that a connection has been made and now the real transformation is going to have to occur. And so um, the, we, we should think for a moment about the fact that there is an esoteric meaning even to the, to the tale of, of Hanuman being ignited. Anjanea's tail, as is the tail with, with any uh, animal, is located at the Muladhara Chakra. So when he burns Lanka, which is the Muladhara Chakra, with his tail, which is the Muladhara Chakra, that means he disconnects from the earth element. He disconnects the Kundalini Shakti from the earth element. So this means that now there is no danger for the Kundalini to get re-stuck somehow in the earth element. Of course, at this point, there is a potential danger for the person who is the sadhaka, who is doing this, shak- this sadhana, to become very unstable because we on this plane of existence gain our stability by having a connection to the earth element. So it is very important before you try to burn the earth element that there a strong connection is created between the soul and the, and the one point of concentration and the kundalini shakti so that now it will be the soul with the help of the one point of concentration and the prana that will provide stability to the entire organism and facilitate the continued cultivation of kundalini. So, after Lanka has been burned down, Anjaneya goes back to Rama because he has to tell Rama what he's found and then he's got to help Rama get to Lanka so that he can get Sita back. And with the help of monkeys and bears and squirrels, they build a bridge over the ocean to get to Lanka. And of course, remember that even in this world, yes, there is a Sri Lanka, but this the uh, that Sri Lanka was Ravana's home only in a very, very subtle sense. Ravana and, and it was, was living in a different dimension of reality. And the, the physical the, uh, country, uh, countries and places and, and cities and so on that are described in the Ramayana, they are, they are certainly present on the earth, but they are representational more than they are stuck in the earth element like you and I are. So the bridge has to be built, yes, over the physical ocean, but even more over the ocean that exists between this uh, the dimension, the sphere of existence, and the dimension where Ravana was existing. And this process of Setu Bandha connects the Muladhara to the Manipura. We don't want to burn the Rasa entirely because otherwise we will stop uh, existing but we also don't want to get stuck in the rasa. We don't want to get stuck in our emotions. So we build, Anjanea builds a bridge over there, over the Swadhisthana chakra to get to the Manipura chakra. So this is for transforming the sex energy. So now if you're really serious about going in the Kundalini Shakti direction, the sex energy has to be totally transformed and Anjanea is himself a celibate. He is uh, Shiva, he's an incarnation of Shiva. He only looks like a monkey. He is really Shiva. And of course, like Shiva, he is a linga when he he is completely um, stable himself. So now what happens because of this bridge, there is where the, we have not destroyed the body, but we are allowing the rustes to continue to be there, but now we're not gonna be affected by then. Now we move to the Manipura Chakra. And that is where the fire element is. And if, so that is 
That is where now the fire element, and remember that Rama is the, that R, A, R, R is Ram Bija. It's the Bija mantra for the fire element. And of course, Ravana also has the Bija mantra for the fire element there. The difference is that Ravana, in Ravana, the fire element is polluted by the ego. And in Rama, the fire element is pure. So Rama, uh, at the stage that we have crossed the, we have, we have crossed the ocean of Rasa and we have got to Lanka, and now there's gonna be a big battle. And during this battle, the purified fire is going to destroy the impure fire. And of course, it doesn't just kick it out and, and throw it on the, the trash heap. Ravana is, is transformed completely by, being, by virtue of being killed by Rama. And many people believe that he deliberately abducted Sita so that he would be killed by Rama. So what happens is that that fire is purified and now the fire of the entire organism is, ha, now that it's purified, it, then the Kundalini Shakti can move in the direction that it needs to go. Of course, this did not happen in the space of a brief period because Ravana was a very strong enemy. And there comes a point where Lakshmana is seriously wounded. So the, they're, they're the, the sadhana is going on on the inside and at some point the focus becomes disturbed. And the one-pointed focus, Lakshman, becomes seriously disturbed. And what we need is the Sanjeevani herb, and it has to come from a mountain in the Himalaya. So we need to remember that the mountain, the chain of mountains that is the Himalaya, is the, that is the chain of bones that is the vertebral column. So now the Hanuman, the prana, has to go into the nervous system, and it has to find the the Sanjeevani, the Sanjeevani substance, which is a kind of Amrita, in order to have Lakshmana come back to life. And so Anjaneya can't locate the specific mountain where the herb is, so he, uh, or specific location on the mountain, so he just pulls up the entire mountain and brings it back down. So at this point, this is indicative of the fact that now the all the spine and the spinal nerves and everything that is part of the unconscious part of the nervous system <clears throat> is being transformed and is being converted from being uh, part of the ordinary physiology of the organism. Now it's moving into the extraordinary transformative, moving away from death function, uh, uh, part of the physiology. And so, the um, uh, uh, Anjaneya has, one, one event also happens and as while this is uh, occurring and Anjaneya is, has picked up the mountain and he's got it in his hand and he is flying with it the entire mountain. He is flying back to Rama to help Lakshman be saved. And as he crosses over Ayodhya, which is the capital city, and Rama's brother is now reigning there. His, <clears throat> Rama's brother Bharata, sees Anjaneya in the sky and thinks, because most of the people who can fly at that time were demons, thinks he must be a demon and shoots him down with an arrow. And Anjaneya comes and lands on the ground. And then Bharata comes over and interrogates him, and Anjaneya says, I'm carrying this to Rama to, to re re restore Lakshman to health, and Bharata is horrified and says, oh my God, get on my arrow and I'll shoot it, and you will be able to go directly there, and Anjaneya says, uh, thanks a lot, but uh, it's okay. Even though I have this arrow in my thigh, I'll be able to get there on my own. Uh, you continue to focus on the ultimate success of Rama, use your energy for that purpose. Now, as my mentor Vimalananda used to say, he, Anjaneya is immortal, Anjaneya is a superman. How can an arrow that is shot by a mortal, even someone who is a mortal person, even someone as, power as Bharata, powerful as Bharata, 
How can that bring down Anjaneya? And of course, the fact is that Bharata is ruling the country in the name of Rama, and he is doing absolutely everything in the name of Rama. So he's even sending off the arrows in the name of Rama. And that arrow had the name of Rama on it when it got to um, Anjaneya. So he said, oh my God, the name of Rama is coming to hit me in the thigh. I shall permit the name of Rama to do that because the name of Rama is what I am most devoted to. And so that is... Uh, why he had to uh, allow the arrow to to bring him down. And only after Bharata, who is Rama's regent, says that he can go, will he depart. So Anjaneya is now, uh, it brings the, the, the mountain uh, back to Rama and Lakshmana, and Lakshman is preserved, and... And everything is now um, going along in a good direction. And there's a big battle. And finally, Ravana is killed. And so at this point, the fire element is totally purified. And therefore, the Manipura chakra has been transcended. The Jatara Agni is completely removed. The Bhuta Agni is now activated. And... After Sita is uh, regained, she is forced to submit to an ordeal by fire. And what is happening is, again, the, the, the Kundalini Shakti has to be able to be tested by moving through the Manipura Chakra, which it will only be able to do if it has been totally transformed it, the fire element has forgotten everything about the physical body. Now it is only focused on moving in the direction of Rama. And now from the Manipura chakra, the Kundalini goes to the Anahata chakra. And what happens? Rama, Sita, Lakshmana, Anjaneya, a few others, they fly from Lanka to Ayodhya in a kind of an airplane called the Pushpaka Vimana. So the Anahata Chakra is the seat of the air element. So naturally, they're flying in the air to get there. And naturally, Anjaneya is the sign of the wind god. And naturally, Anjaneya is facilitating this process. It is said that um, that uh, Anjaneya never comes in his own body beneath the Anahata Chakra. And if you're ever going to interact with him, it would only be at the time when his awareness is in the Anahata. Because once you go past the Anahata, means once you, meaning the Pran, meaning the, the Shakti, then you get to the Vishuddha. And the Vishuddha is the space element. There's not even wind there anymore. There is Vishesha Shuddhi. That's what Vishuddha means special purification. And then you lose all of your desires, not even the desire to help out other people or any kind of desire like that. Now you're just, you've been very purified and then your attention goes to the Ajna Chakra and all that is left at the Ajna, ch Ajna Chakra is the awareness that there is you and there is the Supreme Reality. And once you go by the Ajna Chakra, there is not even the awareness of yourself. There is not even the consciousness of individuality. There is only the Sahasrara, the thousand petal lotus, where you have reconnected to the supreme reality. Um, once the, but for the purpose of the Ramayana, once Rama gets back to Ayodhya, Lakshman, Sita, Anjaneya, there, is, there are many things that happen, and this, this, as long as a sadhaka remains in the body, then what will happen is there will be, if the sadhaka has transformed the kundalini shakti, there will be continuous awareness of the soul, even while there's awareness of whatever still needs to be done to get rid of the remaining karmas that have caused the body to be pre created in the first place. And eventually what will happen is 
Um, Sita will disappear. She will go back into Bhu Garba. She will go back into the earth element. Lakshman will disappear because the god of death comes one day to meet Rama. And he says, anybody who comes in while we're talking, you must, you must abandon immediately. And Lakshman happens to come in and Rama says, I'm abandoning you immediately. That means I'm giving up even my one-pointed concentration. And Lakshman therefore jumps into the Sadayu River. He jumps into the river of the Supreme Consciousness and he is lost. And then Rama, the individual soul in the form of Rama, then says, I no longer have Sita, I no longer have uh, Lakshmana, there's no reason for me to exist anymore. And he himself jumps into the Sadayu River and then he is also ends his life. But he doesn't end his life before he tells Anjanea, you, you will remain here and you will assist people to do their sadhana, you will remain yavat chandra divakaro as long as the sun and the moon exist. And remember that the sun and the moon not only are up in the sky, but they're the solar nadi, the right nostril, and the lunar nadi, the left nostril. So as long as those nostrils are working, that force of Hanuman in the Sushumna is always going to keep maintain that connection with his concentration on both Rama and Sita. Dakshine Lakshmanoryasya Bame to Janaka Atmaja Purato Maraturyasya Vande Tam Shri Ragunandanam Jaya Hanuman. Welcome to Living with Reality, a podcast featuring archived teachings and modern conversations with Dr. Robert Svoboda, brought to you by the Be Here Now Network. Living with Reality explores Ayurveda and other wisdom traditions of India, which Dr. Svoboda has been studying for nearly 50 years. For more information, please visit BeHereNowNetwork.com slash Dr. Svoboda. That's D-R-S-V-O-B-O-D-A.